And we're here today to talk about the cost of a pixel, specifically the colors that you choose in your apps and how they directly affect the battery uses of your users' devices. So before we do that, we need to think about the actual technology that goes into users' devices, and specifically the display technologies. Now, there are two prevailing kind of technologies that are in most devices, uh, LCD and OLED. Uh, the majority of devices, especially on Android these days, tend to be OLED devices, um, OLED screens, especially from the mid-level mid to kind of high level. Um, and even in sort of like other platforms, they're slowly moving to OLED as well. Um, LCD stands for liquid crystal display, uh, and they work very differently to an OLED. Um, they work with um, what they call liquid crystals. So each pixel will be made up of a number of color channels of liquid crystals. Um, the important thing to know here is that they require a backlight. So those liquid crystals don't illuminate themselves. It requires a backlight behind it to shine through the crystals, and that's how you see color. Now, most of the power for an LCD display goes into that backlight. The, LCD, the actual crystals don't require that much. It's the, actual, it's the backlight. So more brightness is more power. OLED are different. Um, OLED displays are light emitting diodes, which, as you can guess, actually emit light themselves. Um, so there's no need for a backlight. Those pixel, each pixel will illuminate itself, and that's how the light shines out. Um, the good thing here is that they allow sort of a true black. So with, uh, with LCD, the way you achieve black is by turning all the crystals on, and then the, 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 light, the backlight still shines through. Um, so you can never really get that really dark true black. OLED's completely different in that the way that LEDs work is they just don't turn the pixel on, and that's how you get black. Um, so that's, that's where the power is. Um, and the power is dominated by actually emitting the light. So it's the LED shining uh, that actually is the power. There's no backlight, it's the actual LED itself. Now, there's a number of kind of arrangements that displays can be made in. Um, so if you think about a pixel, um, you tend to have three channels, R, G, and B. Um, and that's the simplest arrangement. Each pixel on your display will have three channels. And that is true for both LCD and OLED. They both can have different arrangements. Um, so that's the most straightforward and simple, mentally simple, like you have one, two, three. Uh, but there's also more complex ones, uh, things like RGBR, where you'll have the, all the channels will be split across two pixels. And each pixel will only have two channels. Um, it's just a way of kind of expanding pixel size without trying to fit as many LEDs in. Now, it's important to think about because in terms of power, more LEDs equals more power usage. So here, we've done a lot of stats over the past kind of year or two um, because we know that users care deeply about their battery life. And the display tends to be the biggest power user, power user of your device. Um, so here you can see a very straightforward chart, which is the fact that the higher the brightness on your display, uh, the more power it uses. And, you know, it's kind of simple anyway. Like, everyone assumes this is the, way, the case. Um, but the thing is, it's actually quite linear. So again, kind of simple. Um, but then we started kind of comparing OLED devices, uh, OLED screens versus LCD screens. And in this case, it's the Pixel versus the iPhone 7. Um, we were displaying a screenshot of maps in both a normal day mode and a night mode. Uh, the reason we use a screenshot is because we didn't want uh, the differences between, say, iOS or Android to conflict with the power. And dis displaying a screenshot is just displaying an image, so this should be pretty similar on both platforms. But you can see with the numbers that the iPhone 7 and the LCD screen, um, the actual milliampere on both night and day is the same. It doesn't change. And that's because it's an LCD screen, and it, does, it can't like make use of those dark pixels, um, well, the power uses anyway. But on the pixel itself, uh, because it's an OLED display, uh, the actual power usage drops down by 63%, which is huge. Like 63% of the biggest power user on your device, just by using a dark theme. Um, but even going more into it, when you look at actual individual pixel colors, so we did a test where we just displayed one color on the, on the, on the display. And the actual color itself makes a big difference in power. Um, so blue itself is 25% more, takes 25% more power than, say, green or red. And then another chart, which is pretty much a summary of the previous chart, but it's in nice uh, line format. Uh, but you can see that black is uses the least amount of power, kind of assume that anyway, and it goes up and up until we get white. And because white uses uh, needs channels from every one, it's full red, full green, full blue, um, it requires the most amount of power. And guess which color we've been pushing you towards over the past couple of years? Material came about, or it was three years ago, and we changed from hollow, which was a nice dark theme, to this white theme instead. And we kind of shot ourselves in the foot slightly in terms of power. 
So let's look at some case studies of Google Apps over the past couple of, well, year or so, actually, which have started implementing Dart themes and the power savings they've managed to have. So the first one is YouTube. Um, here we have an example which, you, well, you can't see the video playing, but it is. Um, and you can see that at full, back, uh, full brightness, um, just by switching to a dark theme, you save 43% of your battery usage. Now, when you're playing a video, the rest of it underneath isn't so important anyway, so dark theme really works. Now, when it's paused, uh, we save even more. It's 60%. Uh, my guess here is that because the kind of overlay of the video actually darkens the video, um, was, you know, it, it, we're using even more dark colors, so we save more power. Um, now, this test itself depends very much on the video content. If you have a video which is fully white, then you're not going to save so much. Um, but yeah. um, and with Gboard, so Gboard is actually a really good example because this, this is something users can control. If, of you now, you can switch to a dark theme, and you can save 20% of your battery. Well, not 20% of the display use of the battery, um, just by switching to a dark theme. So it's actually quite a big thing. And finally, our maps. This is kind of the, the canonical example of dark theme and where it really is great. Um, because it has the obvious benefits of the battery, which is 31% when it's on full brightness. Uh, but it's also usable. Like, you don't want maps being a, like, a really white theme when you're driving at night and glaring you in your new eye. Um, so dark theme here really makes the app, uh, the app more usable in a nighttime setting. And now Alan's going to talk about implementation. All right, so how can we embrace the dark side uh, and implement dark mode in our apps? Uh, Go into dark theme, which will not save us any battery here, uh, but it will on your devices. So you may remember night mode from uh, the developer preview of Android last year, um, or the year before that, or the year before that, or the year before that. Uh, but we, uh, we released day-night support in AppCompat, uh, which was implemented by Chris. There's a great blog, or, blog article about it. Uh, our recommended way to implement dark mode in your app and Basically, get it for free, depending on how your themes are architected, is day-night. So if you're using AppCompat, you can get this almost for free. The stock widgets will respond automatically to changes in the device's night mode. You can also manually toggle between light and dark mode. So you can add a switch in your app, in your app to do this. Um, this is the demo from the Android X checkout. Uh, if you have Android X checked out from AOSP, it takes five minutes. You can run the AppCompat demo and take a look at how this is implemented. Uh, it's basically one line of code to switch between uh, whatever theme you're using before and AppCompat. You simply take whatever your app theme is and have it inherit from one of the AppCompat.DayNight themes. And again, depending on how your app is architected, everything might just work. Uh, you can also apply an overlay theme uh, dynamically at, at runtime. So if you want to have a pure black OLED theme, there, uh, there are some apps that already do this, or a pink Hello Kitty theme, or what have you. Uh, you can apply a theme dynamically at runtime uh, by just calling uh, getTheme.ApplyStyle and applying an overlay theme. If you want to learn more about overlay themes, uh, Chris and I talked about those at I.O. a couple of years ago. So, what that looks like is just overriding activity.setTheme. This ensures that any time a theme is set on your activity, uh, you will then immediately overlay it with uh, the black theme or Hello Kitty theme or what have you. Uh, and then any views that get inflated will be using that theme correctly. All right. Uh, either way, you're going to want to structure your app to rely on theme attributes. When I said depending on how your app is architected, this is what I'm referring to. Uh, all of the platform drawables heavily rely on theme attributes to obtain their colors. So things like color foreground, color control normal, color accent, you've probably seen. The implementation of the material uh, track switch, the, the thumb, uh, sorry, the uh, switch that you can drag left and right, the thing that sits directly under that is colored light gray when it's enabled, uh, and dark gray when it's disabled. The implementation of that uh, is just a color uh, Selector, a color state list that refers to the color foreground attribute from the theme, which is white under a light theme, black under a dark theme, and a disabled alpha, which is also defined by the theme. So we, we vary that based on light and dark themes. You'll notice there are no colors hard-coded here. Um, and in general, you don't want to hard-code colors. We'll talk about this more later today uh, in a talk with Nick Butcher about themes and styles. Right. Um, so I mentioned night mode showed up a couple of releases ago. The night qualifier has been in the platform since SDK 8. Uh, it has always been there. It was uh, 
opened up for general use in uh, Android N. Uh, so the ability to set the night qualifier system-wide. Uh, there are some apps now that accidentally set the night qualifier system-wide. If anybody noticed messages doing that recently, it's been fixed. Uh, uh, so uh, this is what you'll use for switching your resources. It's a resource qualifier similar to uh, portrait or landscape. You just create a drawable-night or a values-night. And if you have resources that are difficult to extract theme colors out of, say you have a welcome splash image that is very complicated, and you couldn't put it in a vector drawable, so your designer just gave you a PNG. Uh, and you can get a dark version of that that has significantly different colors, and it's too complicated to put in a vector drawable. You can just drop an alternate version of it in drawable night. When the device is in night mode or when your app is in the AppCompat implementation of night mode, you'll pick up that drawable automatically. Uh, same thing for colors. If there are colors that you want to switch, say your accent color is slightly brighter in a dark mode, you can extract that out to a, color, a named color resource, have one version in colors, one version in colors night. Or sorry, values night. All right, so here's what the theme implementation can look like. Uh, if you want to switch your parent theme based on night qualifier, uh, you simply define the theme twice, once in values, once in values night, and give it a different parent. When your theme is uh, referenced under uh, Non-night mode, you'll pick up the, uh, the light theme. When it's referenced under night mode, when the night qualifier is on, you will pick up the dark theme. Same thing goes for colors. So here we just have the same color defined two different ways. Uh, Any time that you reference hard-coded FG, it will pick up black under uh, non-night mode. It would pick up white in night mode. All right, so what can you do to update your app, uh, maybe do a little bit of restructuring, and make it work really well for night mode? Well, you can start really simple. Just take a screenshot of your app, invert it, see how it looks. Uh, get a sense of whether there are images that you'll need to have an alternate version of. Uh, here we see a bunch of avatars. Those we probably want to keep the exact same. Maybe we want to change the background colors a little bit. So that may mean uh, extracting theme attributes. That may mean creating some alternate values if they're vector drawables. Or that may mean getting different sets of PNGs to drop into drawables night. Next. You want to take a survey of the usage of colors in your layout XML uh, and in your styles. So go ahead and set the parent of your theme, whatever your app or activity theme is, to be something dark, uh, theme.appcompat or theme.material, and see how it works. Uh, you'll want to look for issues with uh, losing contrast between foreground and background, not seeing dark colors where you expect to see dark colors. And in general, what you see should look a little bit like that inverted screenshot. You'll notice here, it looks nothing like the inverted screenshot because all of the background colors and foreground colors were hard-coded to be light theme. The one thing that wasn't hard-coded, uh, and you can almost see it here, is uh, the label for first name, which is now invisible uh, because it's the only thing that's correctly pulling in the dark theme uh, color attributes. So this is going to require a lot of work. The hard part is doing that work. So you'll want to refactor your colors as much as possible. Take any hard-coded colors in your layout XMLs, move those out to named color resources. You can split those based on values, values night. If you want to do more than one type of theme, maybe you have a Hello Kitty theme you want to apply dynamically, you'll want to extract those to color attributes that have some sort of meaning in your application. So as I mentioned before, uh, we have text color primary that's built into the platform theme. We have color accent. We have uh, color primary. Uh, so you should be using those as much as possible and certainly take advantage of uh, theme attributes for specifying colors, propagating those into your drawables, into color state lists, into your layouts. Uh, you can convert colored your PNGs to alpha masks and use tinting. Uh, if you look at... We don't have a slide for that. Uh, so you can wrap those with a bitmap element and set an alpha and set a tint with Android colon tint. Um, we'll talk again a little bit more about this at the themes and styles talk later today. All right, next you actually move over to the AppCompat day night theme and you get automatic switching when the device is in night mode. Uh, you could also add, consider adding a preference. Um, so here we have uh, the Twitter app. I don't use Twitter so much. Uh, the Twitter app, which has 
a very obvious uh, affordance for switching between day and night. So if you tap this, it goes into dark mode, and it's really convenient for your users. Uh, you'll also want to keep in mind that there is a platform-specified dark mode. So you may end up with a tri-state that says, inherit from the platform dark mode, or I can specify always dark or always light. You'll also want to test that your application works when night mode changes. So you can toggle this uh, manually using ADB from the command line. So open up your app once you've implemented the day-night uh, theme. Toggle it into night yes. Your application should preserve whatever state you had and be recreated. It's going to go through a full on destroy and recreation and be recreated in dark theme, preserving user data. Uh, on Pixel, Pixel 3 devices running P, uh, night mode will automatically switch when the device enters battery saver mode. So that's another way that you can test this. You can also toggle it directly from developer options and uh, push night to mode to be always on, always off, or uh, one of the, the legacy things that we support is switching based on time of day. You can also learn more, as I've mentioned many times, uh, in the themes and styles talk that I'll be giving with Nick Butcher later today. Uh, if you want to learn more about the lower level things in themes and styles, uh, Chris and I gave a great talk uh, nice. a couple of years ago at Google I.O. So that covers everything you want to know but have been afraid to ask about themes and styles. Uh, and if there are things you're not afraid to ask, we will be outside in the Android lounge uh, that way to answer any of your questions. So, Thanks, everybody, for coming. Please embrace the dark side. <laughs> <laughs>